There are so many different aspects to editing images inside of Photoshop, and that requires us to use things called panels, a set of dedicated tools for a certain task. Now you'll find all of your panels are listed under the window menu at the top of the screen. Roughly in alphabetical order, it's a long list of ways in which you can access a specific set of tools. In the case here of the colour panel, it has a tick adjacent to it. So it's telling me that that panel is visible somewhere on screen. Well, if I come out of here and click on the word window, it's actually positioned in the upper right hand side of the interface. That's my colour panel and it gives me ways in which I could perhaps drag the sliders in here and change the hue and choose how intense the colour is or how bright or how dark a specific colour is before I utilise it with a painting tool. Now that panel doesn't have to stay where it is. You can hover your cursor over the tab name for that panel, in this case colour, click and hold down the left mouse button, keep it held down and drag out from that home at the right hand side of the screen. That will then appear as a floating panel in front of your artwork. You can take your cursor down to the bottom right hand side, click and drag to make that larger. In the case of the colour panel, that might be quite handy for seeing a larger array of hues and saturation and brightness options. At the upper right hand side, we have what's called a panel menu. When you left click on that, it'll give you commands that relate to the panel in question. So in here, if I wish to, I could view RGB sliders and that'll give me access to reds, green and blue values. If I have a specific colour in mind and it has a numerical value assigned to it, that's the place where you would type it in. But that is all that the colour panel will allow you to do is set an active colour to either paint with or maybe to define. It won't, however, store that. For that, you would need what's called the swatches panel. So over here, not visible at the moment, but there is a tab in the background in there called swatches. If I left click on that, it will pop to the front and across the top, it will list all the last 15 colours that have been utilised in the application. If I was to hover over and click and drag that panel out from here, this is where you would store your colours. You mix them in the colour panel and then you go down to the bottom of the swatches panel and click on the plus to create and save a new swatch. And that will save you from having to remix that colour every time you wish to utilise it, especially if it's something like a brand of colour you're going to use on a regular basis. So these two are a very good example of what panels offer and their limitations. A colour panel simply allows you to mix and experiment with new colours. The swatches panel is the place where you can store and save colours to use on a regular basis. If you're done working with a panel, say the colour panel here, you can go up to the upper right hand side and click on collapse to icons. Now that will take it into what's called a button mode where you'll have not only the name of the panel and a symbol, but you can click on that to make it pop out. Click on the same button again to make it disappear and you can hover your cursor in between the close and the expand icon across the top and drag that around to reposition it. If you wish to see all the options again, click on the expand icon and you have the full set of options available to you in that panel. When you're done, you can click on the X at the top to close that panel, which technically just hides it. Always able to retrieve it from the window menu by clicking on the panel's name, in this case colour, and it pops back up again in the same place. So you will have to tackle many panels inside of Adobe Photoshop because they're all geared to a specific type of task.